Hello, and my name is Dr. Howard Penrose. I'm the Vice President of Engineering and Reliability Services at Dry Silker Electric Motors. On this presentation, we're going to discuss a study that I was involved in performing in 1997 while I was the Senior Research Engineer at the Energy Resources Center of the University of Illinois at Chicago. This project was the impact of electric motor repair on soft foot conditions for electric motors. The research itself was performed in 1996 and 1997, and it was published in IEEE Electrical Insulation Conference as the impact of mechanical stripping on electric motor reliability. The concerns were that uh, although a number of studies had been performed on the past as the, resu as the result of uh, burnout ovens impact on uh, the core of a machine, no one really looked at what the mechanical impacts were on the stator itself. Again, I was at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Uh, the other partner was Leo Dreisilker, the president of Dreisilker Electric Motors. And the test sites were Dreisilker Electric Motors, where the, we performed the mechanical stripping process. And the other location was McHenry Electric, which had just been purchased at the time by Dreisilker Electric Motors and had a burnout oven available. We utilized uh, AutoCAD and a software called 3D Studio Max in order to model the machines. We took precise readings uh, with using um, um, mechanical measuring tools that were all calibrated, and then we entered that information in into basic uh, forms. We simulated the core, which we would be bending the steel around if that was what was found. And then, of course, we shaded it. Uh, this allowed us to create 3D animations uh, of what would happen as the core steel uh, changed. And then also, by taking those direct measurements, uh, we were able to create a stator that directly represented the existing stator. Then using 3D Studio Max, we were able to apply the twisting and deformation that occurred uh, to the machine directly from the AutoCAD measurements. The AutoCAD drawings would be imported straight into 3D Studio Max. At the time, this was version uh, 2.1, which allowed us to create the twisting motion. Of course, what we did do was uh, in the 3D Studio Max, we would exaggerate the twisting enough uh, to identify what the shape would look like. In this case, we took what would be a few degrees and we made it uh, out to 10 degrees so that we could see how the form was misshaping on the stator. Now, it's important to realize that these stators are supposed to be mounted horizontally in a burnout oven, but we found that whether they were horizontal or vertical, this uh, de deformation occurred. This was the realistic twisting of about 2% or 2 degrees. And then we would bring it back into uh, AutoCAD to verify the readings uh, after it was animated. Okay. Part of the reason why we wanted to see what would happen both in the air gap to soft foot as well as to the mechanical fits. Now, having experienced this in the long past uh, during my time in the Navy when we had an issue with an oven that, uh, that was over temperatured and then later on at a, a small shop in Virginia, we had a number of cases where end shields did not fit properly back on motors after they came out of the burnout oven. Now we used a couple of different methods. Now the dry silker thumb or the mechanical method, that is a maximum temperature of 410 degrees Fahrenheit during the operation. So we did the testing at that point. The temperature controlled burnout oven that was used using a water suppression system, we did at two temperatures, one at 650 degrees Fahrenheit and the other one at 800 degrees Fahrenheit.
Now, 650 degrees Fahrenheit and 800 Fahrenheit were the temperatures of the oven themselves, whereas all of the studies actually indicate that you're supposed to have a temperature sensor on the stator, on the core, and that's the maximum temperature. In reality, what happens is people set the burnout oven temperatures up to 650 or 750, and um, they do not have the temperature sensor on. And what we found is a number of cases where people actually turn off their water suppression systems in order to strip the motors much faster. At 410 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, which uh, the stripping time for each of these was less than one and a half hours. The six stators selected were rolled steel, cast iron, and so on. At 650 degrees Fahrenheit, which required an eight hour stripping time, we did uh, cast aluminum, extruded aluminum, cast iron. And then for the eight hour stripping time, the aluminum performed so poorly at 650 degrees Fahrenheit, we left it out of the study. Instead, we concentrated on the heavier frames, the cast iron and the rolled steel. At 410 degrees Fahrenheit, both the cast iron and rolled steel had no change whatsoever. Now at 650 degrees Fahrenheit in the burnout oven, the aluminum twisted up to 8%. That meant on one of the larger stators, a soft foot increased to 60 mil, 0 0.060 inches. Uh, in cast iron, now it did also twist about 2%. The soft foot was up to about 12 mil. This is one of the reasons why when a motor comes back, even from a good burnout facility, that you'll often find that you have to modify the uh, your your motor on alignment. You have to add in extra shims. At 800 degrees Fahrenheit, the rolled steel twisted up to 4% and the cast iron twisted up to 3%, both ending up with soft foot up, uh, upwards of about 12 mil. The soft foot in each of these cases were compared before and after, meaning that this change is the after and the increase in uh, soft foot. He also made several observations. At 650 degrees Fahrenheit and greater, the stators and core, because all of the paint and all of the varnish, both uh, on the surfaces and between the laminations, had been uh, burned off, the uh, motor started to oxidize after about 48 hours in an air-conditioned environment. Uh, we also noted deformations, twisting in the aluminum frame stators, and then mechanically stripped uh, stators, the ones that were performed to 410 degrees Fahrenheit, everything including even paper tags were left on the stator core, uh, those did not oxidize, meaning those were in as good a shape uh, as they could be. The one on the left was stripped at 650 degrees Fahrenheit in a burnout oven, and the one on the right was uh, performed using mechanical stripping. The red tag in the upper left on the uh, stator on the right is actually a paper tag that was on the side of the warming table. Now what we noted uh, in the study was that more research was required. We were hoping that this study would prompt uh, an independent study such as the studies performed on core steels. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we were unable to accomplish that. So this at this time remains the only study on the deformation of stator frames through the stripping process. We do know that stator deformation occurs in relation to time and temperature. Now your existing machines will also have some uh, level of deformation just due to the fact that most companies use a green steel on the manufacturing of their electric motors. So there is some soft foot that occurs just due to time. And again, this study shows the after, uh, the, the difference of before and after. Soft foot and air gap problems occur through stator rewind stripped at 650 degrees Fahrenheit and above. And they were significant, in, especially in aluminum frame machines at 650 degrees Fahrenheit and extreme at 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so that, that is a huge issue. And then other mechanical effects such as rust 
uh, which occurred in the vapor controlled ovens. For more information on safe stripping practices to protect your electric machines, please contact us at Dry Silk or Electric Motors. That's www.dreisilker.com. And you can contact me directly at hpenrose at drysilker.com with any questions. Thank you very much.